Hello beautiful people, happy Sunday and welcome to your practical application of astrology. This video was meant to be recorded yesterday, however, somehow it didn't happen because of all the influence that's going on around us astrologically. As we know, this is a very busy weekend astrologically wise, so uh, this video is being created today and I guess uh, there is a perfect timing for everything. Uh, so of course, this is a practical application of astrology, not an astrological forecast, but I'm just going to mention the few main things that's been going on this week before I share how this was showing up for me and I do have a channeled message which I actually wrote yesterday I channeled it for myself but I'm going to share it because I feel that this might resonate with many people and potentially other people might find it helpful and I actually have some new uh, decks to play with so I'm going to pull some of cards uh, some cards from these decks so we started this week uh, with uh, Sun conjunct Uranus then uh, the, the, I'm just going to mention the main thing I'm not going to talk about everything uh, uh, then on Wednesday, Mercury moved into the sign of Taurus. Uh, the first aspect Mercury made was the square to Pluto on Friday. And then, as I mentioned, this is a very busy weekend astrologically. Yesterday, we experienced the Venus conjunction to Uranus and Sun conjunction to Jupiter. And all of these are ruled by Venus because all of this took place in Taurus. And then uh, also, this was all under the influence of Moon in Libra, therefore also ru ruled by Venus. And then today, we are experiencing Sun making a sextile to Neptune and uh tonight or early on tomorrow morning Monday morning Mars will make a conjunction to North Node currently ruled by Mars because North Node is in the sign of Aries and this is how we will begin uh, this new week starting from tomorrow Monday the 20th uh, and Sun is going to move into sign of Gemini so as of tomorrow we will be in a Gemini season so that will be an opportunity for making a new choice right because as we know we are fast approaching the full moon in Sagittarius and right after that uh, Jupiter is going to move into the sign of Gemini himself ruled by Mercury and at that time uh, Mercury actually still will be in the sign of Taurus but for the new moon in Gemini which is on June the 6th Mercury will already be in the sign of his rulership in the sign of Gemini so this is all I'm going to say about that because like I said I don't want to make this into another astrologically fully focused video even though everything of course which I'm talking about is astrology because astrology is my life at the moment at least anyway but uh, yeah, as you might notice, again, I'm in a different environment. So I have arrived, uh, well, or had, I had arrived in, in the UK on Thursday and I've been here ever since. I'm here for another two weeks. So once again, a change of environment. And like I said, with all the aspects that are going on, this is not a surprise to me, especially with all the Uranian quality that we have uh, acting out at the moment, because of course, Uranus is the ruler of Pluto. Pluto is retrograde and Uranus just had a conjunction with its own ruler Venus <laughs> at the moment Uranus being in Taurus so there are a lot of things that are coming up to the surface especially with regards to the stories we tell ourselves and this is the main topic of this conversation because as you may remember when I was doing this uh, walk down the memory lane uh, six months ago seven months ago last uh, autumn or fall or well spring if you are in southern hemisphere when I was here in uh, end of September beginning of, of October 2023 it was actually right alongside with um the eclipses well right before the eclipses actually fully hit um uh, it was the same thing. I was walking down the memory lane, going to Slovakia, coming to England, going back to Slovakia, and, yeah, and then going to Mexico. And these are the main hounds for me uh, for my life until this point, because I spent half of my life in Slovakia, second half of my life in England. And uh, the past four or five years, uh, Mexico somehow got interwoven between the two. Uh, so yeah, so with these stories that we are culminating now and starting new ones, because of course we already experienced the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in April, April 20th, but now we're going to have the full moon in Sagittarius, which is an illumination of the story that got seeded in December, which is, this is, as I keep mentioning, this is the last full moon to the new moon, which got seeded in 2023, because as of the next full moon, uh, the new moons that... Um, the full moon is illuminating, uh, already will have taken place... Uh, 
this year because the Capricorn full moon will be illuminating the seeding of the Capricorn new moon which already took place in 2024 so anyway going back to the Sagittarius and the topics of the stories as I started saying last year uh, when I came to England uh, I remember myself uh, talking about how is it so easy to step into the roles that we played in the past at least that's how it is for me because these uh, environments it holds a memory which is why many times when people go to certain places in the world uh, I know Egypt is very famous for this we, people might have um, like a sudden awakening or they start channeling light language or something or they might have this uh, download of their past lives or whatever might take place but it's also uh, connected to this lifetime because everything is always happening simultaneously and it's interconnected so coming back for example in this case for me coming back from uh, Mexico and going to Slovakia and now subsequently coming to England it's so easy to step into the roles that I used to play in this environment because these aspects of me still exist they just like kind of lying dormant and are not fully uh, at the forefront when I'm in different places so for example the role that I play or um, you know how I come across or the aspects of me that are coming to the forefront when I'm in the UK are not the same ones as when I'm in Slovakia and interacting with the environment and people over there and it's the same for when I'm in Slovakia it's different from being in England or when I'm in Mexico it's different from Slovakia or or, um, or England and stuff and this of course if people uh, spend um, all their life or majority of their life in one place then perhaps this is not so noticeable but because for me because I move around so much and uh, I, I especially growing older I really notice um, because I know myself better now and I know what is authentic for me uh, I notice that I am actually not very happy spending anywhere longer than six months I really with this Gemini on the IC for me uh, it's very important actually for me to change environments my Mercury as I keep mentioning many times and as many Many people obviously notice my Mercury is in Aries, uh, even though Mars is in Taurus on 29 degrees, but my Mercury is in Aries and Mercury is the rule of my uh, IC, my um, home. So I know that I need at least two homes because this is very important for me to uh, gather this new information, gather these new connections with my external world so I can evolve this North Node because my North Node is in Taurus, but it's ruled by Aries because because it's intercepted Taurus is intercepted for me which I mentioned multiple times and I can really feel it I can really like I can observe it in my life how this is really important for me so anytime I spend a prolonged period of time in the same place I start um stagnating I start stagnating but but by saying that now being uh, away from Mexico for well coming up to a month shortly uh three weeks at least now I've been uh away from Mexico um I'm starting to miss it. I'm starting to like uh, idealize it that, oh, it wasn't that bad and I really loved it and I loved everything about it, you know, and that's always the case, you know, every time I leave a place and then I start missing it and I'm like forgetting all the things that were, you know, not so great. Uh, and I'm sure this is uh, probably familiar to people, especially when it comes to relationships that, you know, when we are apart from people, we forget about all the things that trigger us about them until we, you know, get together again and then we go like, oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> I forgot about these things that I don't enjoy as much so it's the same for me like every time I go to Mexico and it's the music the loud music and you know there are all these other things well not all of them like obviously there is, there is much more there that I enjoy than not because I wouldn't be going back so many times but uh, I, I am not so uh, fully aware of these things until I'm in that environment so it's the same like when I go to Slovakia because after being in Mexico for six months it's like oh yeah you know now I idealize you know like how I meet my, my, miss my family and I forget about all these things um, or they are not as um, at the forefront of my mind the things that are actually very challenging for me unless I'm in that environment and it's the same for England so as I mentioned uh, and shared in my previous uh, practical application of astrology the first week in Slovakia is always hard for me because it's a complete shock it's a complete shock it's it's very very different from the environment which I was experiencing uh, in Mexico for six months where it's like you know I'm somewhere uh, where I don't know anyone so I can do what I want when I want uh, my time is completely um, in my own hands I'm in charge of it and I decide how I want to spend it or how much time I want to dedicate uh, meditating or doing anything and it is really 
uh, very easy or much easier to be spiritual and uh, to be in your heart and you know being compassionate and looking at things from higher perspective when these conditions are met which is uh, you know something very very important to me you know these are really uh, things that uh, hold a great value to me and they are my needs you know like having all this time and space and uh, being able to do what I want when I want and spend as much time doing what I need as as I um, you know decide that is necessary however this is not always possible because of course nobody lives their life always this way right and this is what um, my soul is Marisa from growing the flow um, actually pointed out to me in our recent conversation because she said that well this is the seasons this is the seasons of our life that it it is not always just one season it is not always just summer it is not always winter and we know that even in countries like for example Mexico there is not just one season all year round, even they have the wet season, then they have the dry season, you know, sometimes it gets even quite cool, like it did this past uh, winter when I was there, it actually got quite cool, uh, in January especially, it was uh, fairly cold, especially at night, so there are definitely seasons everywhere wherever we go there are seasons even though they might not be four seasons like it is noticeable or used to be before uh, even weather gone crazy like it is these days uh, so what I'm trying to say uh, you know by all of this is that yes being in Mexico it's it's great but even then as I was sharing while I was there before I left uh, things started going wrong you know the universe was starting to indicate that okay it's time to move on because you cannot just stay here cocooned and hide away from the world being in your hermit you know mode just like dedicated to spirit all the time because you are a human and you came here to have a human experience so yeah let's go back to Slovakia and back to England where yes this is being back to matrix you know being um, fully present and interacting with uh, what uh, for you know majority people is an everyday reality and that's where I go into my shock state <laughs> and I go like oh I can't cope with this this is this is not something that I can cope with this is not how I can live but it's not true because of course I used to live this way I used to be part of this and this was my life too at some point and especially before my grand awakening in 2020 uh, so yeah so this is all just stories right because now we're really looking at the stories you know the stories we're telling ourselves because Venus <laughs> you know Venus uh, is in Taurus and Venus actually hasn't conjunct Jupiter just yet she will conjunct Jupiter uh, on on the day of the full moon in Sagittarius a few hours before uh, but Venus already conjuncted Uranus so it's like okay well let's uh, shock ourselves into remembering what are the stories that we are attached to and are these st stories actually still working for us or are they uh, outdated because Sun conjuncted Jupiter it everything got illuminated right Sun uh, when Sun conjuncts a planet yes the planet is being born like burnt because we have the con combustion but then it's Kazemi right which is like it's been reborn it's been reborn with in the lap of the sun so Uranus was reborn at the beginning of the week and Jupiter was reborn yesterday because we had the sun Jupiter conjunction but again you know a lot of people might think because this is what the traditional astrology will say like oh yeah sun Jupiter Venus Jupiter conjunction all these things the most auspicious and yes it is but <laughs> you know just like with any planet everything has polarity and it depends which frequency are we tapped into and that's the fruition <laughs> that we will be experiencing right so like for example for me personally like I was you know like I know I'm hopping from theme to theme but like how I started sharing uh, being dropped back into matrix you know by my own doing by my own free will choice because like I said after being in Mexico for about five months so the first months or so maybe not full months but the first few weeks even when I go to Mexico so country which you know I enjoy being at is the recalibration it's just like the readjustment it's like when everything just in me relaxes and go like <sighs> okay now I can breathe you know I can breathe and then it's like I settle into certain mode right and for like two three months everything is great you know I can really feel the growth and stuff and then uh, you know then things start going you know like a little bit uh, from the high to the low you know like and then I get to like five months mark and then it's like okay well I'm ready to move on now <laughs> you know it's like I'm ready for my flight now and like I was sharing you know things started going wrong so I was like okay universe is really pushing now and then I start having the desire 
desire that okay well let's go back to Slovakia or whatever you know like because there is always positive in uh, you know there's always a polarity playing out in everything even in places that we might not be so fond of but there is something something familiar you know there is something that we do enjoy in that environment even with my family there are aspects of being around my family that I really do enjoy it's just like you know it's it's not the full package but there are aspects of it that actually uh, I do enjoy because otherwise I wouldn't be going back right and it's the same for you know being in England or ever, wherever you know wherever we are whatever we do there are aspects that we enjoy more and there are aspects that we enjoy less and even if we do something that we enjoy all the time eventually it will lose that um that thing that we enjoy about it you know it will like get stagnant because that's evolution there is this continuous desire for growth so even repeating the thing we we enjoy all our life and we just keep doing it every day there needs to be some kind of change because otherwise it just becomes stagnant and it stops working for us right so anyway so with all these aspects that are taking place especially this week and especially this was all leading up towards the mars north node conjunction which is taking place tonight and this is all a setup and a stage prepared for the full moon in sagittarius which is the illumination of the new story that uh, we were seeing in, in december mid-december 2023 prior to you know pluto moving back into aquarius because at the time pluto was still in capricorn and actually during the time of the next new moon in Sagittarius which is what will close this cycle in December 2024 Pluto will be uh, you know again in Aquarius so Pluto was in Capricorn during the time of the new moon in Aqu uh, new moon in Sagittarius 2023 now obviously as we know Pluto is in Aquarius but it's retrograde and then the next time we have the new moon in Sagittarius 2024 on December 1st Pluto will be once again, once again in Aquarius but with the difference that it will not be going back to you know Capricorn again. So this is why currently we are all re-experiencing and re-evaluating and comparing <laughs> comparing this new energy which is already streaming through and we might have been experiencing in the past few months comparing it to the past because we are still, you know, at this point when I'm recording this video, Mars is still in a closing phase conjunction with this North Node. The conjunction is happening tonight. It hasn't happened yet. So we are culminating. Sun is sextiling uh, Neptune today. Culmination, because even though this is a first sextile between the two, Neptune is now behind the Sun, which makes it a closing sextile, which is Aquarius. What are we releasing in order to close the cycles? And in order to understand the difference between the new energy and the old energy is that we get a little bit of the new energy energy flavor for example me being in mexico started channeling started doing light language you know started all these different you know just edging another step forward on you know my personal evolutionary path and then coming back to the family environment where i came from you know these places like i said slovakia and england in the equal share where the two only homes that i had uh first for the first half of my life and the second for the second half of my life so with the person that I'm personally becoming, because I'm sharing, you know, my, my experience here, I was then being, uh, you know, invited, pushed, pulled or whatever into the uh, previous environments to see the difference, to see the difference. And of course, you know, I could uh, and I'd have, you know, it's, I'm not saying it hasn't happened. Go back into self-judgment and ego and inferiority and say, well, you know, I thought I've grown. I thought I've changed so much. And now look at how am I reacting to this environment or, you know, what kind of things are coming up for me again, all these unhealed, wounding, unhealed stories, all this kind of thing. And we can go into this self-judgment and go like, well, I haven't changed at all. Well, I haven't grown at all. Now Nothing has changed you know I'm still the same person but of course that's not the truth because we all keep changing and evolving on on you know <laughs> like minute basis not even hourly basis like you're not the same person you were an hour ago definitely not the same person you were a year ago things have changed you know time has passed uh, things have happened you know you met people you had experiences you've done things and we keep growing continuously so this is like the you know two steps forward two three steps back or three steps forward two steps well, however the saying goes without you know getting less in, in uh, lost in technicalities 
this is what it is. You know, we edge a little bit more forward, but then we get tested, you know, then we get tested because it has to get grounded, you know. So like I start, you know, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, being in Mexico for me, you know, which is my Pluto line and being able to be fully dedicated to my, to my self growth, to my um, evolution, you know, to my spiritual work is very easy. It's very easy for me because that's what the place is dedicated for. This is how I've always experienced that place. But now trying to bring that to Slovakia, which was never the place for me where the same experience happened. Slovakia is just not that for me. You know, Slovakia is not Mexico. Slovakia for me is not a more brutal line. <laughs> you know, Slovakia is the place where I was born and where there is the most karmic charge, obviously, like with the family and everything. It is a very different experience. So it goes like, okay, well, you uh, had the opportunity, the gift, you know, the grace to to learn this, to 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 acc uh, accumulate this, uh, you know, tools, gifts, uh, activate in this case, activate the gifts that are within us that we brought into this life, and then we bring it to the previous place. So we can see how much we've grown. We can also bring these gifts into these places because that's how it is. You know, we didn't come here. It's it's all very multidimensional. So of course we came here as a soul incarnate to work on our own soul's desire to grow in this particular direction or to grow through these experiences or to heal certain things from previous lifetime, ancestor line and stuff like that. But at the same time it is it is about me because it's my life and, you know, my son is where it is, you know, my son is the center stage of my chart, therefore I am the son in my life, right? Just as it is for every single person, everybody has their son somewhere and that's the center stage for them, you know, because the son is the center stage. The son is only for this lifetime, it's only for this incarnation. Uh, you know, I'm sure we had the same sun sign at some point, but this is not something that is a continuation from lifetime to lifetime, not necessarily until it's need and as it's needed but the sun is for a particular lifetime you know so my life is about me i came here to have an experience of course but at the same time it's not as easy as that because actually my by me being born into this particular family in the particular country in the particular time and place and you know and everything else that was going on around that time when i was born when i you know <laughs> incarnated into into this form um i also have a contract with that that okay my energy my light my soul's essence uh agreed to contribute something to that particular family to that particular country to that particular place and all the rest of it and at the same time you know because this is like matryoshka like the russian doll right it just gets bigger you know like like or, or it gets smaller you know it depends which whichever you go you go from the small doll and just put packing packing it up put the bigger doll and a bigger doll and a bigger doll or you or you keep unwrapping it whichever way you want to take it but it's like that right it's not just one layer so is this soul that of course came here to have an experience contribute towards this family you know heal certain uh, dynamics or patterns within that family system right and then also within you know bring that energy the es essence of yourself into that particular city for example or neighborhood city and then country and then you know continent and whatever but at the same time also to contribute towards this whole human collective evolution right so all these things are happening simultaneously so that's why even me doing my astrological reading recently i've noticed this that it's not so easy anymore to just keep it focused on that particular person because we are all part of the collective you know so it goes in and out it goes this is all about me whilst actually this is not just all about me this is actually about my family this is about my country this is about the world this is about everyone you know about the human collective so this is what's happening with us all opening ourselves up more to this multidimensional uh, essence of who we are, which is who we really are. We are not linear. We are not just this, you know, one thing in a box that we were being put into and conditioned to believe that this is all we are, right? So going back to what I initially started with, you know, I might say that, oh yeah, in Mexico, you know, I'm on my Pluto line, this is where I grow and evolve and, you know, all the rest of it. But as many people who channel or do spiritual work or are psychic can say, well, but you need to ground that energy. You know, it's all fantastic to grab it all there and download it and, you know, you know, like and have all this wisdom or whatever. Uh, and I'm not saying that's my case. I'm just trying to use the analogy. But if you don't ground it, then what is it good to anyone? Like, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I can be in Mexico and be in this cloud nine with all this spiritual stuff. 
But then I wasn't born just to have this experience all by myself, right? I came here with a lot of different contracts that involve a lot of different people. So, for example, in this case, yes, but now I have to bring it back to my family, you know, even if it's not affecting them necessarily directly. It's not like, oh, I come and I'm being welcome in a doorway, like, hey, tell us what you learn and share it with us so we can all learn the same. Like, no, of course, that's not how it works, because especially my family, the role they play for me in this lifetime, uh, they they might never change the role that they play. They might forever play the same role, which is like, what do you, what is it you do? <laughs> and people pay you for it, you know? Like, you know, my family doesn't actually understand fully what it is that I do, you know? So they don't particularly care, um, you know, as long as it uh, keeps me off the streets, right? They don't particularly care, like, oh, yeah, what did you learn in Mexico? Are you channeling? What is that? You know, so that's what I mean. So it's not like uh, on a human ego level that they're waiting for me there, you know, like, oh, tell us what you learned, how much you spirit grow they don't care you know but on a soul level on you know like there are contracts that are like okay well you bring in this essence of you this energy of you into this old environment into this old story and have the opportunity to change the story just by the pure essence of who you are and being where you are placed right so this is what i observe like okay well you know there is a certain um attraction certain draw for me to forget you know why I don't like going to Slovakia and I forget that and then I go like oh okay let me go back and then I remember once I'm there I'm like oh why why did I come back you know why, what am I doing here you know but obviously like I said this is not just about me you know this is about me but it's not just about me and then it's the same for England you know like there is this all these new versions of ourselves, the, the versions of ourselves that keep growing and evolving, but at the same time, there are all these old versions of ourselves that coexist at the same time within ourselves. So the new, like new, hopefully improved or, you know, a more evolved version of ourselves can go and meet the old version of ourselves. So then it's just all can keep continuing, right? So, you know, like, uh, and again, you know, I don't even know if this makes any sense, but, um, coming back to Slovakia and being able to experience that, well, nothing changed here. You know, this is how it's always been. My parents are how they always were, but that's not even true, you know, because like speaking to my mom, for example, every now and again, there are like, you know, there is a vocabulary she would never use before, like, you know, like, oh, resonance or, you know, I intuitively pick this for you or, you know, there are like things, you know, things, words that I never heard her saying before or, you know, certain things that she shared with me with regards to, you know, how she feels about nature and environment and stuff and I'm like I don't remember my mom talking like that in essence everything on the surface looks the same but it's not you know things have changed you know these people also grown and evolve even though it might be not so obvious if you know we just approach it with the oh these people don't change they're always gonna stay the same nothing's changed right but it's not strictly true because we know that everything keeps changing and evolving otherwise it wouldn't be here you know things continuously have to keep changing and evolving because it's 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 part of life right being a life means keep changing and evolving because that you know life is movement life is change is the only constant um so anyway, so, you know, having the opportunity to bring the old, ver the new version of me into the environment where the old versions of me are still alive and present and come up to the surface, that's the grounding of the energy. This is the test. This is the challenge. Like, okay, well, now how are you going to merge the two? You know, how you as this person that had, had this experience of growth for the past six months, how are you going to interact with this environment, you know, this family environment. And this is how we make the change, you know, in the ancestor line, uh, you know, like a culture, you know, with regards to our microcosm and macrocosm. This is how we make the change. We bring the new knowledge, the new experience, the new whatever, and interact with the same old environment, with the same old people, same old story. But because we're not the same anymore, we have an opportunity to make small adjustments. And these small adjustments will lead to more small adjustments. And then eventually this will become bigger adjustments. So this is literally what it is. So this is why we would feel continuously drawn to certain things from the past or people from the past. If we feel like, well, there is still something that I need to help to grow and evolve with regards to this person, uh, this place, this circumstance this pattern whatever it is because this is how we keep contributing to this 
to this change that we weave in together by, you know, um, co-creating this new world, this world that is going to eventually look very different, but it's a step-by-step -step process. So, you know, looking at it now, we will see no change. Looking at it in five years, we will see some change, 10 years, more change, 20 years, much more change. But being here, right here and now, we might not see so much change because we will keep adding to it. It's like, you know, when birds are uh, creating the nest, it's just, it's, it's, it's a process, right? Like, like first it looks nothing and then it starts growing and then eventually we see fully formed nest or something you know so um this is what i feel is happening and it's the same with uh, with regards to me coming back to england you know because uh like i said even last year when i was here the same um problem not problems necessarily the same outdated belief system the same limitations the same um you know like things that make me feel stuck or uh, they, they it's so easy for them to all come out you know these patterns these um yeah limiting beliefs literally limited beliefs uh you know, in Slovakia, there are different things that I'm dealing with there. You know, there are different limiting beliefs. There are different storylines because they are attached to different people and different environment. In England, yet, that, that once again, there are different aspects of me that come out for healing. And yes, I can say like, oh my God, I've been here before. You know, I've done exactly the same things, you know, last year, six months ago. I was even talking about the same thing last year. Uh, but it's not the same thing. You know, it's not fully the same thing because it's like adding this next straw to the nest, this ne nest to the next uh, you know piece of mud or something and we are forming something we are creating something so we keep revisiting and we keep adding the next layer you know and eventually it will become something completely different but it's a step-by-step -step process layer by layer so that's why we keep attracting the same situation circumstances the same people to you know um help us see how much we change and also to help to change that situation to help to manipulate it into something different to have a different experience through that experience or through that situation or through that person or something so this is what i've been really observing and at the same time processing my own you know emotions around it um uh, like you know like i was sharing that it's very easy you know in mexico it's very easy it's it mexico had its own challenges it wasn't all perfect you know every place has you know the pros and cons uh and like i said now being you know being in slovakia and now being currently in england you know it's easy to look at the other place that is not right here right now and think in the superlative like oh yeah everything was much better there but is it you know when we in that place then we think oh something else was better in the other place you know uh but it's it's this <laughs> i feel like i'm just talking in circles but this is literally what life is is this continuous opportunity for growth through the same um uh, same things same people frame same experiences you know and then obviously when we learn the lesson when we've grown when we change the energy to the point where there is nothing more for us to learn or change or evolve from then we move into the next stage then we attract different things right different experiences we feel the desire to go to different place to meet with different people and then new teachers will enter our life uh you know and and that's how it goes this is how life goes this is like how evolution goes it's just I, I I really you know I'm really struggling how like how to put it into words, but I can just see so clearly how you know how these <laughs> cycles within cycles just keep growing and evolving and us with them you know us with them. So like I said, me you know coming going around in circles around these three main countries and now uh, obviously Bulgaria has been added to the mix as of last year because that's where I'm heading for the summer and then also that will be a, this new place this new added place to this equation which i will see hopefully certain growth you know like can compare me from one year ago and how things were and how i experienced things to whatever is going to be happening now and this is yet another layer you know but at the same time is this opportunity to observe the patterns of the past and because we keep re-experiencing and attracting them and decide for ourselves okay what out of this is still working for me and what actually I don't want to have to keep, um, you know, take drugging with me into the future. And this is what I feel um, 
it's so present for so many of us right now because of these aspects that we are experiencing. Uh, and this is all Taurus, you know, this is all the things that matters to us. This is all the things we value and it's the relationship towards oneself. And now with Mercury being in Taurus, it's, you know, like what are we really focusing on thinking about and talking about? It's our needs and values because it's the Taurus season. It's this thing where we put in the roots of this new energy, but in order to become stable and to become proper rooted you know so we don't just get blown off by the first wind um we need to know ourselves we need to know like what is the sustenance what is this thing that keeps us grounded and stuff so yeah so this is uh really what i've been observing and struggling with observing because you know there is a lot of resistance there is a lot of that you know ego thing that oh i think i've i, I thought i've gone through this before i thought i have grown this like why am i experiencing this again and then you know going into the other aspect of it like oh i'm a failure i didn't know nothing you know i thought i've outgrown this i thought i've learned this and you know i must obviously have done something wrong but it's not about right and wrong and it's about you know it's it really is the continuous passage of growth and nobody is getting out of it you know because even the people who we might look at and think like oh they got it all figured out you know these people these channelers these spiritual teachers they got it all figured out you know like they probably never have any problem again you know or issue and we know that's not true because you know it doesn't matter you know what is you, you can sell level even though that is not the right the right way to put it, put it because this is not about hierarchy but it doesn't matter which floor of the elevator you are at each floor has its challenges you know they're just gonna look different they're gonna feel different so for example someone we we you know we would look uh, at uh, you know as uh, someone on a pedestal you know any of these spiritual teacher we might say oh yeah for sure they wouldn't have to deal with it or you know this situation or they wouldn't deal with it this way or that person for sure would know what to do or what but we don't know right we don't know because we are not in that person's situation and maybe the things they are in interacting with uh you know like yeah they might look different they might feel different they might be um, you know of a different caliber or something but i'm sure there are some you know because we uh, this is what we all came here to do we all came here to work on these things on this continuous learning learning adjusting and growing you know is this path towards self-mastery through hero's journey and there always will be another thing to experience because this is the planet for it this is the planet of experiencing these different things because we have this physical body that has this um gift of all these different senses and nervous system and this is how we can have a human experience right so it's never gonna end so going back to my story and you know this um tendency for self-judgment criticism and all this ego popping its head out you know whether you know the inferior version of it or superior whichever version of it it doesn't matter you know it's still ego and ego is important because of course it's play its role in a human incarnation otherwise you know we, we wouldn't even survive if we had no ego you know it's uh but it's about the balance right it's about the balance knowing what role this ego came you know is met, is, is playing and also allowing that higher self to be present at the same time so the both can be in balance so anyway like i was saying it's it's not about you know like perfecting it or never making a mistake or uh passing all this exam and never making the same reaction or response to a certain situation or person or something but about observing okay but how much i've grown since last year so for example having a certain interaction like with my family or something but at the same time while having the interaction trying to understand it in a different way or stopping myself from reacting or saying something or you know like uh, trying to look in at it more multi-dimensionally or seeing the different solution or different approaches or whatever so it's like we always add in the next layer we always add in the next layer and through that we are learning more about ourselves you know this Taurus this um, Jupiter in Taurus like learning to reconnect with ourselves and uh, get to know ourselves better and learn to trust ourselves and build this sense of resiliency and uh, you know self-sufficiency self-reliance all the rest of it so this is what I feel is really going on, uh, you know, going on for many people right now uh, through all these different uh, 
you know, situation, people uh, and circumstances coming around, you know, with the south node in Libra, moon this entire weekend is in Libra, it made a conjunction to south node, so all these things are coming around for us, you know, under the influence of all of these energies, because we're trying to find a balance, because like I said, we cannot all live in Mexico all year round, and just be checked out and removed from the society, because that's what, not what we came here to do, I didn't come here just to live on a beach, do nothing, and have my own little safe life, you know, tucked away somewhere and not care at all what's going on somewhere in the in, in you know in the world but at the same time not to have to you know not to feel like I have to sacrifice my life and my happiness and you know my dreams and desires just because you know there is some disaster going on in the world there has to be a balance and that's why I feel that I am being continuously pulled from one place to another because I need to learn to balance that yes I cannot be in Mexico all year round and it cannot be all about me just doing spiritual work and just being in relation to spirit and just you know avoiding humans and avoiding matrix and just not interacting with any of that but of course knowing also that okay well when i uh when I am in these environments and interacting with these things and people and circumstances um, I know that this is not something I can do all the time either but there has to be a balance so this is what we I feel are learning at the moment because this is what the entire world is learning like going from the one extreme to another you know the extreme of isolation and extreme of codependency and measurement and sacrifice and going back to the other extreme you know this like it's all about me or I don't care and stuff like that and we're trying to find the balance and we're trying to find a balance in every area of our life and now with all this conjunction you know all these resets point happening in Taurus while whilst Mars is going to be uh, doing a reset in Aries tonight but you know like I said this conjunction between Venus and uh, Uranus well Sun and Uranus at the beginning of the week Venus and Uranus yesterday Sun and Jupiter and then uh, Venus and Jupiter on a, on a day a few hours before the Sagittarius full moon these are really important reset points because this is all to do with Taurus and we know Taurus plays a very important role because it's the second sign of the zodiacal wheel so if you don't have the roots if we don't trust ourselves how are we gonna go through all these different passages <laughs> of our journey right there is no stability not much sense of stability and security because first we need to become grounded and st stable and secure within the physical and then we can deal with all these emotions which is why child first needs to learn the physical stuff before they learn to regulate their emotions you know they cannot do it all <laughs> you know it's just too much to learn to talk walk and stuff and regulate your emotions at the same time what do you mean is too much right uh, because you know from Taurus we go to Gemini and then we go to Cancer right so there is a certain uh, at the moment step-by-step -step process that we are growing through you know it's not going to be always this way but this is where we at right here right now so this is why I feel we are continuously being tested you know like where we have the opportunity to grow and I feel like a lot of people especially if you've att attended workshops or retreats and then you come come out of it if it was a one that obviously like resonated with you and you feel like all um, you know like on the cloud nine especially after retreat you know if you go somewhere for a few days and you come home and you think I'm a different person and from now on my life will be very different and I'm never gonna do the same things again I'm never gonna you know be this blah 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 all this and then obviously eventually we will slip to some of our old ways or you know it's not all just going to change overnight because of seven day or five day retreat or something and then eventually all these like some of these old patterns are going to poke their ugly heads out again and then we have the opportunity as now new person new version of ourselves to deal with them in a different way and this is what's happening uh, on the individual level right now and this is what's happening on a collective level and you know the individuals are the ones that made that make up the collective so we all working on this through our individual experience because that's contributing to trying to resolve this on a collective level but it all starts from the individual we cannot resolve it from the collective <laughs> we have to start from the individual right and this is what I feel has been happening and like I said there's been a lot of instability you know for me by my own cho choosing and you know I'm not complaining about it I'm just observing it uh, but at the same time for me you know having these expectations to just live my life like I did in Mexico you know have a certain routine have a certain um, you know like expectations from myself with regards to when I want to do things how long I want to dedicate time to doing these things and it's not possible it's not possible when I'm in Slovakia because the environment there is very different and people that I'm interacting with have a very different 
and uh, lifestyle and uh, needs and routines and it's the same here you know I have to adjust uh, my routine to to the environments that I'm interacting with which again is an opportunity for growth right because otherwise we just stagnate in it's like oh yeah it's easy to grow in you know when everything is perfect and just so but how about you try to now apply you know these strengths and resiliency and you know nice dose of flexibility in a different environment and grow through that so this is why universe will always challenge us and we will always be experiencing these opportunities to test our spiritual and physical muscles and learn about ourselves which is making us feel stronger and more resilient and this is life this is life because at the same time through these experiences and facing the challenge up front and transmuting this energy and uh, using that experience to you know create something completely different out of the, this process of transmutation right we changing the pattern we changing the pattern of the past because venus is the ruler of the south node uh, moon is in libra with the south node and venus you know as the ruler of everything in taurus was overlooking the moon in libra conjuncting south node whilst venus was conjuncting uranus sun was conjuncting jupiter and uh, you know sun is already con well sun already conjuncted uranus and venus is about to conjunct jupiter herself you know in a few days time so this is all this opportunity for balancing this old story these old ways this old trauma these old things that got frozen in time you know this uranus aquarian energy yes it's a path to liberation and freedom and change of the pattern but many times that goes through challenges difficulties unexpected situation traumatic situation which are frozen in time so that's why we will keep re-attracting situations that got unresolved from past lives or this lifetime early on this lifetime and we keep being re-traumatized or you know or triggered so the trauma of the past is coming to the surface right because we have opportunity to heal it heal it and integrate it so we can change the pattern and start these new cycles mars conjuncting north node tonight you know after all these other conjunctions happened prior to that and then like i said post this mars north node conjunction venus will conjunct jupiter and then we have the full moon in Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter, under the influence of the new phase with Venus. And this is right before Venus moves into Gemini and Jupiter moves into Gemini, which is all about this choice, all about this multidimensionality, understanding that nothing is just, you know, what it looks like at the face value. Oh, I hate Slovakia. Or I, you know, I don't like this about England. Or I don't like this about my parents or whatever. But it's through looking at that through an eyes of an experience that, yes, you know, this is what I learned. So now I can apply this wisdom, this knowledge, this experience, this um, whatever to this situation and see it differently and interact with it differently and then create something different out of it. And this is how we are changing the world. This is how we are changing our lives. This is how we are. Well, it starts with ourselves. So this is how we are changing ourselves, changing our lives uh, and changing the world as a, as a result of that, because the world, the human collective is made of the individual. Right. So um, anyway, so I only been here for a few days. So let's see how the other two weeks go, two weeks go. And I'm sure there will be many more things to share. But um, yeah, the main thing that I was observing is these old versions of myself and unhealed things, unhealed trauma, unhealed wounds, unhe unhealed limited beliefs that have been coming up for me uh, to look at again. And yes, interact with them through this new eye of an experience that I have been experiencing or I had been experiencing throughout the last six months. So yeah. So this is why these things are coming around and we might think, why am I still experiencing this? I haven't learned nothing. Nothing has changed, but everything has changed. And now we have the opportunity to see it through these different eyes, through these eyes of someone that grown over the past six months period, because you are not the same person you were last year. No, neither am I or neither is anybody else. So this is why we always get the opportunity to re-experience the same thing so we can change the pattern right and this is what we are doing on an individual and collective level we are trying to change the pattern so the story of the past doesn't have to keep repeating itself or um, even if it does repeat itself it doesn't have to have the same um, end right or it doesn't have the same uh, outcome 
And this is what we're going to be exploring in the Gemini season with Jupiter in Gemini, Venus in Gemini and Jupiter in Gemini and eventually Mercury in Gemini. This multidimensionality of options and choices that we will be presented with. So, yeah, anyway, I'll leave it at that, guys, because already seven, 47 minutes, 47 seconds, as I said that. So I'm going to quickly ch read the message and I'm going to um, I'm going to pull some cards. Okay, so I'm going to uh, read the message yesterday, uh, that, the message that I uh, channeled yesterday for myself. And like I said, perhaps it will be of a value to someone else too. So uh, this is what I received. Don't lose faith, dear child. There are many shifts and changes happening all around you and many shifts and changes are being activated inside of you also. Under all this instability, you are coping with it the way you know how, even if it doesn't help for long, nor does it relieve the pressure. You are trying to figure out your own way of swimming through these waves of change. You'll find a way that, that's right for you eventually. It's about the trial and error, even though there's no error, only a learning curve and information gathering. This constant change of... This constant change of... Sorry, I couldn't read after myself. This constant change of environment has an impact also. Dealing with different places, different people, different energies and timelines. Continuous realization, uh, recalibration. Continuous recalibration is needed and that requires a lot of patience and compassion towards oneself. Don't feel disappointed with yourself for not being able to keep up with your usual schedule. Your current circumstances are far away from the ones you were experiencing for the past six months until recently. This is kind of like the new moon in Sagittarius seeding process, right? Just flow with it, dear child. Everything is in a constant flow of change. Everybody is experiencing this in some way, on some level. Nobody is... Uh, Nobody is spared of these shifts and changes that are impacting your planet at this time. This is only the beginning and things are happening much slower now than they, they will be uh, in the upcoming times. Uh, take, take a deep breath and keep being flexible. Make the necessary adjustments whenever and wherever needed. Nothing is set in the stone and nothing is to be relied upon fully. Face and embrace every moment of every day with an open heart and an open mind. Remi remain curious and adopt a childlike sense of wonder. There is so much uh, wonderful stuff happening everywhere and at all times. It's all a matter, matter of perception and paying attention to the world around you uh, and inside of you. Uh, feel into things, feel into life. Uh, connect with your heart, connect through your heart. The heart consciousness is on the rise, is the way of the future that's already here. Keep going and keep observing. You're in the process of learning, adjusting and balancing the old with the new. Don't be too hard on yourself for slipping back into old ways temporarily. Nothing will change overnight. However, each day steps are being taken towards the new way of being. Keep... Keep... Keep tuning into yourself and release that which no longer supports you or doesn't feel right anymore. However, don't judge yourself too harshly if you cannot let go just yet and need to hold on for a little bit longer. You feel when you are ready to let go. Until then, love and accept the parts of you that you are in conflict with. Each aspect of you, each aspect of you loves you and exists to support or protect you from something of the past experience. Change takes time, change takes patience and unconditional love and compassion. Uh, practice loving and living. Life is to be explored and experienced. There's no end to the learning, growing and evolving, so don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, you'll always find a way to get to the next place. Be kind to yourself and others. You all need each other and we are here to support to support you also because you are part of us and we are part of you. Loved unconditionally always. Okay, so 
perhaps as I mentioned, uh, even though I channel this for myself, I can imagine many people are experiencing something similar, so perhaps this will be of a value uh, to someone else too. Okay, we're going to pull a card from Angels and Ancestors, my full-size deck, which I came here to pick up <laughs> from England, where I got a lot of my new decks delivered. So let's see what the Angels and Ancestors wants to tell us about this. Okay, so Angels and Ancestors advice. Okay, a few cards flew out, but too many. Angels and Ancestors, one card, Spirit, please. What are we to know? Okay. Hunter, track down your fears and desires. And at the bottom we have Direction Guardian, choose your path. Isn't that interesting? It looks like Gemini season to me. And look, we have all the, card, uh, all the fixed signs. The Taurus, the Leo... Um, I believe this represents the, is it the Aquarius and the bird is the Scorpio as the evolution. I'm not sure, but you know, it's the wheel of fortune in whichever way it, uh, it represents the four fixed signs. And Hunter, track down your fears and desires. This is what we're doing, you know, to be able to shift the story of the past. Okay, let's see what the Hunter has to say. And then we go to the... Then we go to the wheel, the direction guardian. Okay, the hunter. Message. Track down all of your fearful thoughts and feelings. When you find them, you will find your desires too. The hunter card is based on my favorite Celtic god, Cernunus. Cernunus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cernunus. Cernunus. He is the stag god of the wild and represents both the hunted and the hunter. Similarly, the hunter helps you connect with an energy that is both fearful and fearless. Your fears are the only things that are standing between you and what you desire at this time. So you have to come face to face with them as the hunter does with wild animals and go, uh, go beyond them. Extended message. Instead of being hunted down by your fears or other feelings that you have buried, become the hunter you are being given confidence and strength at this time so use your power to make a difference you are not here to cover away <laughs> to cover away or live in the shadows isn't that interesting that's what i was saying <laughs> about mexico <laughs> to hide away in a cocoon <laughs> Um, you are here to realize your fullest potential, but this can only occur when you step up and do what needs to be done. When this card arises, there could be an, an opportunity to face an aspect of your past <laughs> or bring closure to a situation that has been ha haunting you. If you are a man or identify as male, this card represents your masculinity and an opportunity to know yourself more deeply. If you are a female or identify as female, this card represents your capacity to be strong and powerful and overcome limitations and this is why the past will always comes around to allow the new version of yourself to reclaim your power and remove the charge libra moon in libra balancing why is this happening because venus rules it all venus this weekend is very powerful she's in taurus making all these conjunctions and overlooking all this conjunction at the same time while the, the the moon is in libra ruled by venus and just conjunct its out note ruled by venus the resolution note so this per makes perfect sense to me and then we have the direction guardian like i said the wheel of fortune the direction uh, choose your path and this is the Gemini season because we will have the full moon in Sagittarius. We are entering into Gemini season tomorrow. So we have the opportunity to change, to change the path, direction guardian, to change the path, you know, making a new choice under all circumstances because we are not who we were before. Connect with your deepest desires. Again, the desire. Pluto is the desire for incarnation. Connect with your deepest desires, then choose the path that will make your heart and soul sing. The Direction Guardian card represents the angels of direction. These amazing angels are the one ones who come to us when we are in at the crossroads and don't know which way to go. When we are unsure of what is right for us uh, or what... Um, or of the bigger picture. They can help us know what is best for all involved. The Direction Guardian card refers to the vision of the Hebrew, Hebrew prophet Ezekiel, who is said to have seen an angel with four different faces. The one was child, 
One was a child, cherub, one was a bull, one was a lion, and one was an eagle. These four fa faces show that angels can appear in many guises and guide us in many different directions, but always for our highest good. Extended message, your path isn't set in a stone. That was in the channeled message. Um, and your angels and guides have no expectations for you. you, nor should you have any for yourself. There are many directions you can take. None of them are wrong, as they all hold perfect opportunities to grow and to learn. But life is to be enjoyed and savored, so if you know that there's a direction to decision to be made, and particularly if you are feeling indecisive, choose the path you know is going to make you light up, and choose with your heart, the heart consciousness that the path of the future so yeah the leo the taurus i believe this is like you know um getting past the scorpio facing your fear and seeing things from a higher perspective and the aquarius right the liberation from it all so yeah so this perfectly resonates with everything else we were talking about this is why the old stories are coming around and we are on a crossroads because Mars is conjuncting North Node, which is resetting everything. And also um, we are entering into Gemini season, which is the season of change. And at the bottom was snake. Shed all skin. Shed all skin. Transmutation. We are in the process of transmutation right now. Okay, then I have a new deck which I want to introduce. It's a not new deck, but for me it's a new deck because we want to bring a little bit of a magic. Is the Dennis Lynn Sacred Forest Oracle. I want to talk to fairies as well. So we have angels and ancestors. Now let's talk to fairies. <laughs> let's get a little bit of Merlin in here, my guide, Merlin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, there is a card. Be Spirit Prosperity. <laughs> So we all work in very hard and look at all this beautiful orange, orange sacral chakra, creativity, working towards creating a different, you know, different life for ourselves, life of abundance. There is a honey, sweetness, right? And at the bottom we have toadstool, growth, another card of growth, working towards growth. And prosperity number 44 christ consciousness and this one is number five change change and 40, 44 adds up to number eight the year of strength okay let's see what these two cards are to say to us because like i said this is the first time i'm using this uh deck okay be spirit prosperity in the meadow, the flowers are heady with their sweet scents. Bees flit from flower to flower. They, they're drawn in sounding like the combined chants of a thousand monks. As you watch, you can sense their focus on productivity and working in community. The result of their industry is golden amber honey. This card can be a wonderful sign that abundance and sweet energy is coming your way. It also can be a card of productivity and organization. So if you have been indecisive, again... <laughs> or disorganized and un unfocused this card can mean that it's time to focus reprioritize your life have you been too busy with nothing to show for all your work decide what is most important and take steps in this direct in this direction to activate the prosperity you desire this card also can also signify that it's time to work hard be willing to put in time and energy and your goals will be attained your efforts will pay off bees work together uh, so also consider who energy aligns with yours and how you might collaborate to achieve your desires by doing this good fortune will assure ensue throughout history bees and their productivity are admired because they bring us honey which is associated with the sweetness of life nourishment and wealth honey is also associated with gold uh, in many legends the golden age right the message be spirits bring is that with a diligent work you will gain gold the spirit of the bee says the sweet abundance of the universe is flowing into your life however you need to take action and perhaps join with others to align with the frequency of your dreams believe that you deserve and your goal will unfold this is like giving me goosebumps because this is literally we have the opportunity by re-experiencing old things and the new circumstances, new version of yourself, making a different choice. We have an opportunity to focus what it is that we want to create. 
you know, like, and I many times said that, like, I see, you know, like a human collective as a beehive, even though that I know that some people say that it can be very hierarchical, but, you know, we are co-creating this together. Like I feel being overlooked by, yeah, but the universal consciousness, but it's time to get to work and create this new world by making a different choice through facing our shadows and not escaping our fears and choosing a different direction. So again, it's about the direction. And yet the growth, let's see what the growth, Toads, Toads, Tools, number 44, right? 44. Growth, this one. A lot of flowers. And is it a butterfly? Yes, of course, a butterfly. And mushrooms. <laughs> Through the forest floor, uh, though the forest floor looks sedate, beneath the, sur the surface a kind of enchantment is occurring as the mushrooms grow and wait. Then, when conditions are right, there is an explosion of to toadstools throughout the woods. It happens so fast, it seems magical, yet preparations have long been occurring out of eyesight. The fairies and elves rejoice and even dance in the fairy rings. Things that have been incubating beneath the surface are going to be coming to fruition. Get clear on your goals and dreams uh, because rapid growth is ahead. Be ready. For these projects to come to fruition, you must first be starkly honest about what you want. Ask yourself, is this what I really want? Believe in miracles. Also, in the, same, in the time ahead, you might discover a spiritual guru or step into a new spiritual path. You might find that you are providing providing expansive spiritual growth for others simply by being who you are. Make sure that your foundation is in place because once uh, this growth begins, you will be in for a journey of a lifetime. Fungi are ancients and were the first organism to leave the water and initiate life on earth 1.3 billion years ago. In the forest, their interconnected uh, filament-like roots provide protein-rich food and life for the entire forest. This seemingly humble ancestor to the toadstool is so essential that none of our native conifers could survive without the life-giving qualities of their roots. Their ability to grow and survive throughout all time speaks of your ability to grow and thrive no matter what life brings. The spirit of the toadstool says beneath the sur surface of your life miraculous changes are occurring. Something that you thought was Ordinary is in fact remarkable. You are in a time of rapid spiritual and material growth. Get ready and hang on for the ride. Yeah, I definitely feel that, you know, things are about to get very fast. Because Mars in Aries is conjuncting North Node. So let's get ready. Let's get ready through all these opportunities to face the shadows of the past so we can <laughs> grow through it. I'm just looking, where is the deck? The deck disappear. <laughs> Look at this beautiful back with this Pegasus. You know, give yourself wings. Okay, and now we're going to pull a card from the enchanted map. Because we had all these cards. You see how funny is that I intuitively picked the deck and then we had the card of the Direction Guardian. So let's see what the enchanted map from Colette Baron Raid is going to tell us what is the direction. <laughs> Even though, of course, that's different for everyone, but we know we are co-creating as a bees. <laughs> we co-creating together this world of honey, the golden age. So let's see, enchanted map. What is the next step on our journey? Oh, oh okay. Flying. <laughs> Number 20. 20, duality, you know, co-creating with the spirit, relationships, you know, going beyond flying. The sky is the limit. And I can see the hummingbird then. Hummingbird has been popping up a lot. You know, the spiritual animal. And there is all this beautiful labyrinth. Oh, so I feel it's look at things, you know, because we are lost in a maze. But we can look from the higher perspective. We can actually go to our higher self and see things differently. See a way out of the labyrinth. There is a direction guardian that can help us. You know, so anyway, let's see what the book has to say. And at the bottom of the deck, we have Talisman 49. So we have 20 and 49. 4 and 9 is 13. 
which is number four, uh, 13 number four, yeah, four and nine, 13 number four, which is Saturn, stability, talisman, and a lot of green, a lot of green, and there is a path ahead, path ahead, journey ahead. Okay, let's see what these two cards have to say. Flying, that's the one with the flying horse, this one, and the labyrinth behind, beneath. You have the power to see things from a higher perspective. Upright, if you were a bird flying high in the air, what would you see? When you soar above life's challenges and opportunities, a new perspective, perspective becomes available. Today, you have invisible wings that allow you to shift swiftly bring your circumstances into alignment with your highest purpose this is a sign that your waiting is over that all your hard work has paid off and the things you hoped for are no longer beyond your scope you have the ability to reach for the stars and find one with your name on it spread your wings and soar the angels are waiting for you and then the 49 the talisman so it's opportunity to see things from a higher perspective. There we go. Talisman and the road that's unfurling in front of us. She is naked. So we start in from the scratch. And yeah, there is a talisman. And she's also standing on a rune. You see? A rune. She's standing on a rune. So let's see what this card has to say. A lesson truly learned is crystallized with uh, earned wisdom you have all you need for the success you seek wisdom allows you to recognize traps on the road and familiar patterns that you want to avoid it also enables you to quickly gather um, information about where you are on your journey it helps you recognize your allies and know how to find the best routes along the way now you are at the place where you know the right thing to do and the best choices to make you really can't commit uh, a mistake whatever your inquiry great fortune awaits you for you have the wisdom to arrive at the right decision you've learned your lessons and earned the right to your success but you know we also know there is no such a thing as mistake because everything is a learning curve but understanding the patterns of the past not fearing them but facing them and once again removing the charge balancing them and uh, approaching them from this um point of growth and experience because you're not the same person you were where you last had the experience gives us the opportunity to go into the new direction right seeing things from a higher perspective choose a new direction again by facing the fears same things because we are co-creating so the golden age co-creating and this all represents the growth and evolution okay and we're going to close with one major arcana Okay, Major Arcana, what do we have? Last message to culminate this reading. Spirit, what is the final message? Let's see. Death. Death and rebirth. Transmutation at the bottom, judgment. Grand clearing of the decks. So that's a card 13. Again, growth, just like this one. What have we learned on our journey? And number 20, exactly like this one, right? You know, the judgment, grand clearing of the decks, past is coming around to be culminated, right? Answer the call, answer the call of the destiny, death and rebirth. We are becoming a new version of ourselves. We're creating a new world, the white rose, clean slate, the childlike innocence, the child is here the only one alive is starting from the scratch so again it's the same message you know opportunity to move past the previous cycles into the new direction okay guys that's it that's all i have for today i wish you a wonderful rest of the weekend and i'll speak to you again soon bye for now